Hello, and welcome to the PBPA podcast. I'm Sarisha Gunta. Thanks for joining us today as we talk to Lori Shapiro, Pro Bono Partnership of Atlanta Staff Attorney and Employment Counsel. Thank you, Sarisha. In this podcast, Lori Shapiro is going to talk to us about employee termination meetings. She's going to walk us through the process before, during, and after a meeting, what it looks like, what documents you should have ready, and how to minimize risk to your organization while respecting your employees. Before we speak about today's topic, I would like to tell you a little bit more about the Pro Bono Partnership of Atlanta. PBPA strengthens our community by engaging volunteer attorneys to provide nonprofits with free business legal services. And please keep in mind as you listen to Lori's advice today that this podcast is general information. It is not specific legal counsel. Please reach out directly to your attorney for guidance on your specific questions. So Lori, let's first talk about four cause terminations. What if an employee who is performing poorly or refusing to perform tasks that are part of their job, what should an employer do? Well, if you have someone who is doing a poor job or who isn't doing all the work that you've asked them to do, you really need to engage in a performance management process with that employee. So it's a good idea to look at whatever progressive disciplinary processes your organization has in place. You may have a process where you provide feedback to employees through a performance review. You may have a process where you provide feedback to employees through progressive discipline like warnings or other steps of discipline. And those are the things that you should do before you contemplate terminating an employee's employment. You need to manage their performance and you should do so in a consistent manner. So for a particular type of performance deficiency, you should treat that the same way regardless of which employee is engaging in that deficiency. You should follow your organization's policies And you should also be sure to document the steps that you're following at each stage and the feedback that you've provided to employees at each stage where you've warned them regarding something that they're doing that is not consistent with the standards that you want them to achieve. So all of those steps are really important as you consider how to discipline employees and then ultimately whether or not a termination is appropriate. So is there any difference if an employee violates organization policy? There may be, Sarisha. If someone has violated an organization policy, you need to investigate, first of all, to ensure that you have all the facts of the situation and that you know what happened. And then once you have all the facts, you need to consider how that behavior impacts your workplace and whether or not, you know, the level of discipline that's appropriate might be a termination or something that's less than termination. But you certainly need to have all the facts and have an investigation. You need to document that investigation and document any conclusions that you reach related to your investigation before you make a decision about whether to terminate or not. If it is a for cause termination, is it advisable to consult with an attorney before terminating an employee? I, th- I would think it's a good idea because you want to be sure that your documentation is sufficient and that there's not there aren't risks that you aren't aware of related to the termination. Um, an attorney can help you to assess whether there's been any lack of consistency in the way different employees have been treated, whether there's any risk that someone might file a discrimination claim or some other kind of legal claim as a result of the action that you're contemplating taking. And it's a really good idea to know that information before you actually terminate an employee rather than after. So if you're contemplating that kind of termination, I would advise you to consult with an attorney and get some advice. And next What if we're laying off employees due to lack of work within the organization? Yeah, and that's a little bit different, Sarisha, than a for-cause termination because you're laying that employee off because you don't have work, but not because the employee did something wrong that resulted in their termination. Before you're carrying out a termination or a layoff for lack of work, 
you should consider whether or not you're going to pay any kind of separation or severance pay. And if you're going to do that, I would strongly advise you to consult with an attorney and to have that attorney assist you in drafting the appropriate documentation to help you carry out that termination or that separation from employment. Um, if you're going to pay an employee severance pay or s provide some other benefits upon termination of employment, um, you should get a release of legal claims from that employee in exchange for making that payment or giving that benefit. An attorney can really help you with drafting the appropriate paperwork so that you get a release that's going to be effective under Georgia law and so that your organization is protected once you've carried out that termination. Okay, Lori. And so how should an employer go about preparing for an employee termination meeting? Well, once you've made the decision to terminate an employee, there are a number of steps that you need to take in order to prepare, regardless of whether the termination is for um, a cause reason or if you're terminating or laying somebody off for lack of work. One of the first things that I always advise folks to do when they're considering a termination is to really think through what the position of that employee is, what information that employee has or has access to that we need to think about before we have that person leave the organization. For example, if this is someone who has access to organization bank accounts, you need to think through how you're going to transfer that access to someone else so that you're not you know, having that information or that access walk out of the organization without being left for someone in the organization to manage. You need to consider email access, access to other organization accounts, and how you're going to transition that information to someone else within the organization. If it's going to be a contentious termination, you need to consider making sure you have all that information before you carry out the termination itself, before you communicate to the employee. So that's something very important to think about. In addition to the information that the individual may have, you need to think about the timing. How long is it going to take you to transition this information or whatever you need from this employee's job duties to someone else? And how do you want to carry out that transition? In addition, you need to think about the documents that need to be in place for the meeting to take place. In Georgia, you have to have a Georgia separation notice, which is a Georgia Department of Labor document that needs to be filled out any time an employee leaves employment. So you'll have to have that document prepared. You need to consider how and when the final paycheck is going to be paid. And if you're going to have a separation agreement or severance pay, you need to have those documents all prepared and consider how they're going to be structured. In addition, you want to think about what you're going to say. Now, you know, now that we've gotten through the information, the, um, the timing and the documents, you really want to think through the script of what you're going to say to the employee in that termination meeting and think about how the employee may react to the news that their employment is being terminated. You know, right now in the time of COVID, you may be conducting this meeting virtually in some way, so the person isn't physically present. You should think through how that implication might affect your meeting. But also if you're meeting in your office or in person, and you do think that there's going to be some kind of negative or adverse reaction by the employee, you need to consider security and whether you have any need to have some kind of security measures in place, such as, you know, a security guard or access to, you know, police, or hopefully it won't get that serious, but you need to think that through before you have the meeting rather than being faced with a situation like that in the middle of your meeting. You should also, in considering where to meet and when to meet, take that sort of consideration into, or think through that sort of consideration. If you feel there's some kind of risk that the person is going to put others in danger, you're not going to want to meet when there are lots of other people around. Um, so all those things are things to consider before you even schedule the meeting that you're going to have with this employee. So what should happen at the meeting in terms of like who, which individual should be attending? Great question, Sarisha. Um, 
in order to conduct the termination, you should have at least two people from management. So that may mean the direct supervisor and somebody who supervises that supervisor. It may mean your executive director and a member of your board in small organizations. You need to think through who is at a sufficient level of authority within the organization to attend the meeting. But it's a really good idea to have more than one person conducting a termination meeting. I'll never forget an example from when I was in private practice. I had an organization that was terminating an employee who was an older man. And in the termination meeting, the the manager met with the employee alone. After the termination meeting, the employee filed an age discrimination claim and asserted that the manager had made age-based comments during the termination meeting. The manager denied it vehemently, but only those two people were in the room. So there was no witness who could testify as to what was said in that meeting. And so it's very important that you have someone else in the meeting, even if that other person is not talking, but just witnessing what's going on in the meeting. And they, of course, have to be at a sufficient authority level within the organization to be privy to the information that's being shared. So you'll want to have those um, both of those people present in the meeting to avoid any potential claim that you said something that you didn't say that could lead to potential liability for your organization. And where and when should the meeting take place? Well, as I mentioned earlier, it really depends on several factors where and when your meeting happens. Of course, it has to be a private location. If you're in person, you need to be in a conference room or someone's office. You may have no choice but to do this meeting as a video conference. I think a phone call is really a last resort. You really want to be be able to see each other, be able to see how the employee re- reacts to the news and you know make sure that you're conducting it in a way that is professional and respectful of everyone who's involved. And as I said before, it may depend on how you anticipate the employee reacting as to when and where you hold the meeting. One of the things that employers sometimes consider as they're considering when to have a meeting like this is to try to minimize the number of people who might be in the area. So you might want to conduct a termination meeting early in the day or at the end of the day so that there are fewer other employees. And I would also say that just in the interest of of being respectful and, and being kind to the employee, you probably don't want to do this on the day before a holiday or the day before somebody's going on vacation. Really think through the timing and what the impact of that timing is going to be on the person who's receiving the news. Okay, this is great information so far. And at the meeting, what should be discussed? Well, I think it's really important to think through what you're going to talk about before you have the meeting and maybe even draft a script for yourself so that you know to stay with the script. The meeting should be brief and very professional. You should stick to your script and not really elaborate on the points in the script, even if you're asked questions. You know, you really need to sort of stay with the information that is appropriate to share. You should explain to the employee the reason for the termination be honest, be brief. For example, you might say something like, you've received three warnings and you haven't changed your behavior in this regard, including a final written warning, and you were told that your employment was going to be terminated if your performance didn't improve, and because that's happened, we're terminating your employment. Or if it's a position elimination, you might say, your position is being eliminated due to a loss of funding, this is a final decision. You know, we're very, we're sorry that we've had to do this, but here's the information about your separation and your benefits. And I would really just go through the procedural things that need to happen in order to sever the employment relationship. So provide the documentation to the employee, ask the employee to return any organization information or documents and then allow the employee to collect his or her belongings and leave the office if that's where you're conducting the meeting. It really should be very short. You should allow the employee an opportunity to ask questions 
and to the degree that you're able to do so, you should answer those questions honestly, but without elaborating in great detail about the reasons for the termination or anything like that. Your decision is a final decision and there's no right to appeal it. So, you know, you can hear the employee out, that might make them feel better, but you don't really want to elaborate a lot on the information that you're giving to them. You want to be clear and precise. So, Lori, what should happen at the end of the meeting? At the end of the meeting, you really want the person at that point to wrap up and leave. So there are a couple of things you're going to need to do. First, you want to collect any equipment, keys, access cards, you know, any organization property that the person has and make sure that you have everything from them before that they, they leave that you need to get from them. And secondly, you want to, you know, be somewhat compassionate, allow them to pick up their personal belongings and then have them leave the office. You really don't want them to hang around and spend a lot of time talking to other people or saying goodbye. You just want them to leave at that point. And then that's the end of your meeting. Okay. And should there be any follow-up with that individual, with the terminated employee after they leave? Well, really the only follow-up is to make sure that you've provided all the things you promised that you would provide. So you should ensure that any pay that you owe them is paid and, you know, you provide them any information related to benefits that they need to address. So, you know, if they have health insurance, they should be getting information about how to convert it to COBRA coverage. If they have any kind of investment benefit or retirement benefit, like a 401k or a 403b plan, you'll have to provide them information about how to convert that. And that should have been in the paperwork that you provided them at the termination meeting, you know, just what they're supposed to do to convert their benefits. Or it may be sent later if your providers are sending that for you. So that correspondence needs to get sent in the appropriate way. There's been a separation agreement and the employee has returned the signed separation agreement back to you just make sure that you send them a copy of the separation agreement signed by the organization. And again, that you fulfill any financial obligations you've made in that agreement. The only other thing that could happen is if the employee contacts you with any questions, just be sure that you respond and you know answer their questions. They may be about process or whatever the employee is looking for information about. So just be sure that you've answered their questions and that you're not ignoring them if they get in touch with you for some reason that may require a response. And of course, at any time, if you have questions or you're not sure how to address something that's raised by an employee in the process of carrying out a termination, be sure to contact your counsel, your legal counsel, and seek advice. Great, Lori. This information has been so helpful. Thank you for answering these questions. Thank you, Sarisha. On behalf of all our nonprofit clients who are working so hard to continue to serve their clients in these tough times, we truly appreciate you sharing your expertise with us. And to our listeners, we hope you found this information to be helpful. As always, please reach out to your attorney for specific answers to any questions that you have for your nonprofit. Thanks for joining us.